Hello my fellow chatterers and welcome back to an unintended part two. I am not redoing this video unfortunately um, as I moved the camera and touched the screen it turned off so it stopped the video. So we're on to part two. If you haven't seen part one so that this all makes sense then please see part one which I will link here. Now back on to talking about book recommendations for Journeyathon for the um land travel earth path and the magical portal travel path if you traveled to the smoky mushroom via the looking glass with the portal travel then you would need to read a book with something unusual on the cover I feel like i'm being really careful with the camera now because i really don't want this to be in loads of pieces <laughs> so one book i recommend for this one is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This is one of my favourite books. It is um, sort of a folktale retelling of the Baggy, Baba Yaga story. It's beautiful characters, really well put together plot. Um, and I just absolutely adore this story. I don't think you can get <laughs> much more bizarre than an unusual than a house with chicken legs. <laughs> Um, again, another possibly modern classic now, we have James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. So this is kind of like a, a surreal fantasy. It's sort of like sort of magical realism. So it's like real life, but obviously who travels in a peach with a load of giant insects? That's just not <laughs> real life. So there's your magical realism. I think this is a very well-known story, but if you've never read it and wanted to or fancy to reread, this is a perfect opportunity because I don't think... <laughs> It's definitely unusual to see a boy surrounded by giant animals riding on a peach. <laughs> and then the one I haven't read that I could choose for this prompt is Malamanda by Thomas Taylor. And um, this is sort of, uh, so it is, it is fantastical, but I think it's got more of like a spooky mystery feel to it, just from what I've heard. But again, I know next to nothing about I just really want to read it because uh, the characters are called Herbert Lemon and Violet Palmer and I just love those puns. What wonderful sweet shoppy names. And this is very unusual because you have got people standing on a roof. You've got two children balancing on a roof and someone aiming uh, what looks like a crossbow at them. And I think that's incredibly unusual. I really hope I never see that. Let's find out what we need to read for the next part of our journey. But before we do that, of course, Alice in Wonderland, a rabbit in a waistcoat with a watch, highly unusual, or a person who is actually a card. Again, very unusual. So you can definitely read Alice in Wonderland for that one. The next few books are all going to be ones that we are walking to, taking the Earthland Pass. And first of all, we are walking to the Boardwalk Theatrics, which is where we need to read a book that is a standalone. So, See You in the Cosmos is a standalone, inspiring this prompt. So one of the books I recommend reading, I don't physically have with me because I've lent it to my mum. <laughs> so she's currently got my copy and that is A Rover's Story by Jasmine Varga. I've got a note written down here so I could remember who wrote it. Um, she also wrote um, Other Words for Home, which I think she's really well known for, which is also a standalone and could also work. But A Rover's Story was um, Middle Grade March's um, chosen book this year. Um, what's the one? Like feature book, community book book that they all read, group read, group read book, there we go. Um, so if you missed out on that but really want to join in on it, then this is a great prompt to fit it in. It is a sci-fi and is all about a robot called um, Rez. And it's their story. And it um, has a couple of different like, uh, what's the word? Um, viewpoints. So it's also um, following the daughter of one of the astronaut engineers um, helping. <laughs> make the uh make res ready to ready to go and i really enjoyed reading this story another book you could read is me my dad and the end of the rainbow by benjamin dean um this was such a lovely story it is um a contemporary um it's all about a character who um whose dad has recently um come out that he's gay and it is sort of their family 
sort of moving on with that and supporting him as best they can whilst also mourning sort of like the way their family has broken up so it's I think it's really explored really really well and there is a really fun quest with some amazing characters and I think this will give you a sense of the pride feeling this illustration by um Santiara Prabat um I think just really does justice to this book with all of these wonderful colors at pride and um, it's such a it's such a beautiful story and I really enjoyed reading this one so one I have not yet read um also a standalone is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichols and I tracked down this cover because I really love the cover and I think I'm really gonna love the book um it features a neurodivergent character and she's really interested in sort of like the history of um witch hunting in her area like with the persecution trials of the of witches um so I'm really really keen to read this one because I think it sounds amazing and I have only heard people rave about this like even people who don't particularly like contemporary in the middle grade genre have said how good this one is so this could definitely be one I really wanted to read this middle grade march as my narrative diversion prompt and didn't so it could be an option and it could be an option for you too okay let's carry on our journey we then travel to Observatory Towers and the only way to get to Observatory Towers is by walking. So if you want to get here, you're going to have to take the earth and land path. And for that, you need to read a book with an animal companion or an animal on the cover. So we have Julia and the Shark by Kieran Marwood Hargrave, which is illustrated by Ton de Freston. I've heard, again, only good things about this book. I have yet to read it myself. I really, really want to. So this is definitely a possibility. So we have a shark on the cover. Um, and this book deals with themes of mental health as well. And it is beautiful inside. I typically turn to one that has no illustrations. There we go. And it has these like tracing paper pieces. So we've got birds that go overlay the top of this boat. Excited about that one. Another one that I haven't read that I've heard really good things about is Wilder Than Midlight by Kerry Burnell. And this is a fantasy. Julian the Shark's a contemporary. Don't know if I said that, but it's a contemporary. This is a fantasy. Um, and as you can see, we have a wolf on the cover here. Um, and I think the wolf is one of the companions of the trio of protagonists that we have here. Um, my mum loves this one. She said it was brilliant. Um, and it is written by um, Carrie Bernal, the author, um, has a disability. Um, she has um, her arm kind of finishes at the elbow. So if you are wanting to read more diversely from authors who are more diverse, then this would be a good option for you as well. And I hear the story is amazing. Another one I really want to read. We will see. <laughs> we will see if I get around to that one. And the final recommendation I have for this category is Good Night, Mr. Tom by Michelle McGorian. One of my favourite books. This is historical fiction set in World War II. It is also, I think, officially a classic because I know it's part of this classic Puffin children collection. So I think it's officially a classic as it absolutely should be because it's amazing. Um, we have the animal companion of Mr. Tom here, who is Sammy, who is a wonderful dog. And on my copy, you can see him best there on the front as well. The next stop on our journey is Whittleaway Village. And to get from the Zebra Tower to Whittleaway Village, you obviously have to walk there. And so taking the earth and land tra travel path thing, you need to read a library book or a book for borrowed from a friend. So this prompt really depends on you and what you want to get out of the library or what you've borrowed from a friend or would like to borrow from a friend. Um, so I'm just going to mention a couple of things that might work for me. So I have the map of leaves, which would have worked for me because I borrowed this from my mum, which is by... Um, Yarrow Townsend and this is sort of magical realism it feels quite contemporary but there are magical elements in it um, it's very kind of nature based and plant based um, but I'm halfway through reading it so well not halfway through um, I'd say I've maybe got a third um, so I'm really enjoying this so far it's a really really fun read so this would have worked for me if I hadn't started reading it already in June <laughs> But one that could definitely work for me is um, Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Ziren J. Zhao. So I really loved her 
M Y A Iron Widow. Really want to read this middle grade. This is a fantasy. It sounds pretty epic. I've borrowed it from the library because I'm really keen to read it. Um, and I'm on a book buying ban, so that's a good option for me. And I'm just quite excited to read it. So this one would definitely work. Okay, let's carry on. So now walking to the Grombies, we need to read a book that has a quest. Now to me, quest can be what you first of all think of when you're going on a journey to get to a certain place, to do a certain thing. But you could also be, you know, wanting to hit a goal. That could be like a quest. So um, I think that can kind of give you more of a range. Like it doesn't have to be more of a traveling adventure book. Um, but obviously inspired by See You in the Cosmos, um, Alex has got a quest in here. He really wants to record sounds on his iPod to send into space for aliens to listen to. And all through the book, you get um, his iPod <laughs> entry. So it's all done as like his recordings. And you get sometimes get other people's perspectives on there as they record on his iPod too. Um, and he wants to go um, to this rocket launch place um, and launch his rocket. So that's his quest to get there. And then his quest kind of changes as the story goes on. And I just love this book. Obviously, I've chosen it as one for the inspiration books for this readathon. Um, so another book that also has a quest is this contemporary, Melissa by Alex Gino. So in here, I'd say the quest is that Melissa wants to be Charlotte in the play Charlotte's Web. Unfortunately, Melissa is only known as Melissa to herself. Um, everyone else knows her by a different name. This is a book that was previously published as George, but as um, Melissa is a trans girl, that's her dead name, so it was republished as Melissa. Um, so this is all about discovery, um, sort of like self-identity and Melissa growing in confidence to be her true self. And part of that journey is wanting to be Charlotte in the school play because maybe if people can see her as a girl in a play, then they can see her as a girl in real life. More of a typical quest story is another of my favourite books, Rainbow Grey by Laura Ellen Anderson. And Rainbow Grey is a weatherling that lives in the Weatherlands and she sort of has a little bit of a quest in this book. <laughs> but for me to kind of go into what it is would be a spoiler. So I'm not going to. Just gonna let you know there's a quest in here so it would definitely come from this prompt. One I haven't read that I definitely feel has a quest is um, Cameron Battle. So the book I would need to read is Cameron Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms. So this I've just used as a visual because I like visuals. Um, it's the second book, Camera, Cameron Battle and the Escape Trials. But if you've enjoyed the first one and want to read the second one, totally work. It does come across as very like quest based books, um, sort of like that more children adventure story where they've got to go and do a certain thing and achieve a certain thing. So um, this will definitely work. It really sounds like it's full of fantasy. It's all based in, I think, is it Nigeria? I think it's kind of like a fantasy that is based, um, it's based sort of in Igbo culture. Um, so I'm really keen to read like more of um, African based fantasies rather than Western ones. And um, I really enjoy Akata Witch. So I'm very keen to read um, The Cameron Battle. But again, I don't own it from the library. So we'll see if it becomes a priority or not for me. To travel by land to Sancho's artistic port, you need to read a dark book or a book with night sky colours. So for this, I recommend Cogheart by Peter Bunzel. Um, as you can see, it's got quite a dark cover. We've got like a navy blue sky. We've even got some stars in it. But also, I feel this book is quite inspired by like Penny Dreadfuls. Um, it's sort of got this Victorian steampunk clockwork feel they've got sort of like lots of clockwork um mechanicals they've got like clockwork people clockwork animals and like a lot more air travel um and the main character enjoys reading these penny dreadfuls and there's certain like moments in here that do feel quite dark so it's quite a dark adventure um so that definitely works for this one 
one I haven't read but I feel could have a dark plot. Um, again, this is the second book. Um, so this is a high rise mystery, Mic Drop by um, Sharla Jackson. And the first book I think is called The High Rise Mystery or A High Rise Mystery. Um, annoyingly, it didn't give me the exact title in here, but I know it's one of the books that I've been trying to get hold of for a while to kind of read as a mystery book. Um, so I've just got the second one because I still can't get hold of the first one. But both of them deal with a murder within their um, tower block community. So I think having to deal with a murder is quite dark for a middle grade. So that's why that one will definitely work for this. Then have one of my favourite books, Once We Were Witches by Sarah Driver, which is obviously a fantasy because it's got witches. Um, and this one, I feel there are dark elements to it, um, but it still feels like really cosy. There's so many like themes in here that just bring me absolute joy and it goes in places I wasn't expecting it to. We get kind of like sentient things. We get a sister relationship. We get strange places. We get wonderful magic. We get lovely characters. I really love this book in particular. And also we kind of have these sky tones in it, like this yellow thing, <laughs> yellow thing. Uh, we've got two sisters running in front of like this yellow glowing orb, which reminds me of the moon. And I feel the colour is kind of like the sky sort of like just as the sun sets when you haven't got the orange sun, you get kind of like this greenish darkness to the sky and then you've got all of these like shadowy trees around the outside and there's a certain spattering of stars across it as well and my final recommendation um because i really couldn't narrow it down for this one is wolf brother by michelle paver which is um the first book in the chronicles of ancient darkness this is magical realism in that this is a historical historical fiction based like in the ancient world um but their kind of belief system gives it kind of more of a magical realism feel um because it's all done as though that is um truthful um but there is kind of like spirits and like the um what they believe is kind of like shown throughout this but there are some very like dark aspects to it as well i really love this just the sense of place and the sense of time in here is just amazing but it has got like a darker feel to it so it would definitely work for this prompt we now move on to Camp Launchpad and if you got there by walking across the land then you need to read a book with an object on the cover. Both See You in the Cosmos and Alice would work for this. See You in the Cosmos we have got the iPod and we have got the rocket and Alice in Wonderland we've got a whole host of things. We've got cards, we've got the pocket watch, shoot, thank you very much. So lots of those would work. Okay, the books, other books I want to recommend are, so this is quite a well-known book and if you're looking for an opportunity to read it, Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. So um, we have got coins, shells, keys, all sorts of things coming off this book, like pearls and jewels, um, because in this story, some objects can come out of books and that's all I'm going to say because I think you should read it. I love this book. I read it again, reread it recently and it absolutely lived up to my expectations. Second two didn't love as much. It was a fun time to explore but Ink Heart has just got such a special place in my heart and I really love it. It is much more magical realism than full-on fantasy um, and I highly recommend. I then have Ballet Shoes by Noel Stretfield, which is a children's classic. And here we have ballet shoes, drama masks, and a toy aeroplane, all objects that would absolutely count for this prompt. My final one is one I've not read. And um, this is one I really wanted to read for um, uh, middle grade mayhem. But unfortunately, my reading in May was just a bit all over the place. <laughs> so I didn't manage to um but I really do want to read it because I'm excited by this one and this is The Garden of Lost Secrets by A.M. Howell so this is set in October 1916 um a girl is sent to live with her relatives I think and um, yeah stay with her aunt in England it's got a country estate it's got kind of like ghostly kind of aspects to it but we have got keys here on the front cover um we've also got Oh no, those are plants. I thought they were oranges. Um, but yeah, no, it's got keys on the front cover. She's got a letter in her hand as well. So all of that would count. 
if you were to travel to Camp Launchpad via the magical portal, um, unfortunately, uh, the little card that I had <laughs> blue tacked to uh, my stool has disappeared. It's fallen off and I can't find it. So we'll do without that visual prompt, but it's the magic one we're looking at. And for that, we need to read a book with a magical artifact. And for magical artifact, Alice in Wonderland, we have many, um, there we go. She's got the drink me bottle here, which will make her shrink. And there are many magical things going on in that world. So, um, a book I absolutely had to include for this prompt is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison, which I've read recently, have hyped for a long time, absolutely loved. It was just such a brilliant book. Um, so this is the first book in the Pinch of Magic series that features the Widdersham sisters. And it has not one, not two, but three magical artifacts in this book. We have the carpet bag. We have the Russian dolls and we have the mermaid mirror. I also have a more older fantasy, Pure Dead Magic by Debbie Glory. Now this one is set in Scotland, um, which features a family with Italian um, heritage. It features the mafia, some beasts and a magical nanny called Mrs. McClacken. Mrs. McClacken has a magical object. And just reading to find out what that was called, it was a Perspex box um, that replaces things by you type things in it and point it and it will replace that with what you've retyped. Um, and re when I was going through it again to find out what that was called, I just, the fun in this book, I just really enjoyed it. So that is an option. And the one that I haven't read, that again, I hear wonderful things for, these are all fantasy because it's magical objects. And that is Strange World Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. I am really, really keen to read this, but I have so many series on the go. I just want to wait until I've read a few of them before, but I definitely want to own all of these. So this is currently one that I've got out of the library. But the magical artifact in here is this suitcase. I don't know a huge amount. I just know that the suitcases open up portals to other worlds that you can go through. So... There we go. Magical world, magical suitcase, magical object. So the final prompt we need to do is get ourselves to the city of party. So to arrive at the city of party, all you need to do, no matter how you've been traveling, is to read a middle grade book. And that's it. Any middle grade book that you like, you can read and that will count. And that is the only thing you need to do to take part in this readathon is to read one middle grade book that's it that's all i'm asking um if you're someone that doesn't typically read middle grade then you do not have to stick to reading middle grade for all of the prompts as long as you read one middle grade you can still have fun with this reader song still enjoy the plot still enjoy the good times and you can read adult and ya as much as you like you can mix it in with some middle grade or you can just read the one and that is it that's it for the recommendations video thank you so much for watching i'm so excited <laughs> to start this readathon and just have a fun time with you all i really hope you enjoy it too please let me know your thoughts about any of these books if you've got other recommendations um for all of these prompts that would be great i'm hoping to start a google spreadsheet to put books in but it might not happen because time <laughs> it's been hard enough trying to squeeze in these videos to to get them done so it may end up not happening but that's my intention so please list in the comments below thank you so much everybody happy reading and fun travels